Attention! It is time to change the channel! Live from Philadelphia! It's Mr. Pritchard's Art Room! Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to the show. I am your host, Mr. Pritchard, and this is Mr. Pritchard's Art Room. Thank you all for being here again. We have so much to do today. Let's start the show. Well, still trying to replace me. I am Mr. Pritchard, and I welcome you to the show, and I hope everybody's safe and well, including the puppet trying to take over teaching the class. The puppet was right. We do have a lot to do today. We're going to be studying the artist, Pasita Abad. We're going to be studying where the artist is from, a little bit about their life, and a whole lot about their artwork. First things first, Pasita Abad is Iventan from the Philippines. So my first question is, can anyone tell me where the Philippines is, including the puppet pretending to be Mr. Pritchard? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm going to need some help. Let's get started. So this is Pasita Abad, and as I said, grew up in the northern Philippines. Does anybody know where the Philippines is? Hmm... Mm hmm There's North America. Africa. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm Anybody have any ideas? Hmm. Oh, there it is. So, it is right above Australia, near Japan, and there's a little arrow pointing towards it. Made it bright cherry red on the map. Here's a closer-up view. Now, the artist grew up in the northern part of the Philippines, up top. Have some flags from the Philippines also around the image. Did you get the question right? Let's start getting more into the artist now. As I said, the artist grew up in the northern Philippines. Her family was in politics. She also studied law and took part in protest about politics going on then. When her family's house was actually shot at, her family wanted her to leave the country, wanted her to go to Spain. She ended up in America, continued studying, and worked on studying art also. Great artist. A lot of different artwork. Let's start getting deeper into the artist's life and the artwork. First thing. She won an award, 10 Outstanding Young Man Award. That might make get you thinking for a minute, like, wait a minute. First woman to win. I wonder if they had to change the name afterwards. They should have. Maybe just 10 Outstanding Artists. Here are some images of Pasita Abad. Looks like some big artwork. You'll notice some of the designs in the background I put are quilting which we're going to get to in a minute, this idea of quilting. A lot of bright colors in the artwork. This is a bridge that the artist worked on. Towards the end of her life, she was diagnosed with cancer and passed away from it. And this giant bridge was something she wanted to leave, have everybody smile when they walked on it or saw it. Beautiful bright colors, green mint, red cherries with these circle dots and spirals within the design. Here's a quote from the artist. I always see the world through color, although my vision, perspective, and paintings are consistently influenced by new ideas and changing environments. I feel like I'm an ambassador of colors, always projecting a positive mood that helps make the world smile. Pretty powerful statement. And definitely a lot of colors in the artwork and a lot of different themes. Sometimes it's more figurative, sometimes more abstract. 
might be ocean life, might be art from the travels the artist participated in. A lot of different stuff, a lot of growth within the art. Never remained the same, consistently growing in the art. Another thing, too, like we said earlier, some of this artwork is gigantic. I added some fish here because you got to love the outfit on the right picture, pretending to be scuba diving inside. I, I imagine that's the art studio. I like to add images of the artist in video, which we'll take a, a listen and view later of a video, just so we know that this person did live on Earth. Now here's our first idea we're going to get into, trapunda, which is an Italian word for kind of like quilting, embroidery, and you kind of add stuffing to it. Think of maybe a blanket you might have had that's kind of puffy. So not only does the artwork have these bright colors, but it also has dimension to it that it's three-dimensional feeling. have a video here of someone sewing a quilt. You can sew it by hand, or this person is using a sewing machine. Might have this pattern like X's in it with the thread or these thick lines, and it's interesting. Some powerful artwork. All dealing with coming to the country, the idea of immigration. Far left picture. If my friends can see me now, it's got a person kind of big with the city behind it. The image with lots of people in it, far right, I thought the streets were paved with gold. I kind of like the one in the middle too, kind of has this idea, has a feel of a shop. This image of the person with the basketball shirt, you have to blend in before you stand out. It's a powerful statement. What do you think the artist is thinking about? Interesting background in the artwork for this this image also has got a lot going on. Let's move on to a different subject within the artwork. These are paintings of refugees. On the left we have a group of individuals with barbed wire keeping them from an area. On the right we have a child trying to get help for their mother. You know sadly these images have been repeated in history and a lot of these images are very similar to me what's going on with people from Haiti coming over right now and, and what's going on with their treatment. We have a person kind of like in wire here we have more bob wire on the right with the group of Haitians at Guantanamo Bay. This image here is more of a protest piece. This is Marcos and his cronies. Very powerful piece speaking out about who was in charge of the Philippines. Can you imagine how much courage it took to make a piece of artwork like this? It has a very interesting feel to it. Kind of scary. The image on the left is the mother at a refugee camp getting water. The water arrived and giving it to her child. The image on the right is two individuals. Um, and I believe the title is an interracial marriage. Again, very bold colors. Very realistic, yet the brushwork gives it this abstract feel in some of the images. The image on the right has a powerful title. Filipina, a racial identity crisis. Two different kinds of clothes going on. How about the image on the left? It has a very abstract feel in the brushwork with the Islamic individuals. Let's move on to some images of masks. I love the way Basit Abad paints these masks. It has these bold colors, the shapes in them. And again, going back to that idea of the quilting technique too. You have to imagine this three-dimensionalness to them and kind of the puffiness to them, like a quilt or a blanket. Beautiful usage of colors. The image on the left is the close-up of the face that's broken up in the shapes. 
is called Torments of a Filipino Overseas Worker. It has a very, very sad feel to it. That image on the right has all kinds of things going on. The individuals are almost made from shapes and bright colors. This next group is art based more on shapes, designs, less figurative. We have some circles and spirals and objects here. We also have mirrors. Now I have heard the artists incorporated mirrors after some of the traveling and seeing the mirrors usage in art in other places in the world. I just, these spiral shapes within these designs and stuff almost feel like uh, leaves on the image on the right. They overlap and intertwine like falling leaves on the ground. Beautiful artwork. Here's some more of those shapes intertwining and curving around each other. As I said earlier, the artist is not afraid to change their style at all. Consistently growing in style. The last group I want to go back to is this idea of artwork from the water, the sea. I love the artist Pasita Abad's paintings and artwork from ocean sea life beautiful images. Let's get into that artwork. These first two, mostly fish, maybe coral reefs. Again, bright, bright colors. Lemon yellows, blue blueberries, green mint. So many colors on the image on the left. I even have a real coral leaf going on in the background of these two paintings. Pretty similar. Here's probably one of my favorite, the giant octopus. I have an octopus playing in the background also. I think I see a puffer fish in there too, and definitely a shark. Little darker colors. You have more of those purple grapes, blue blueberries, not as bright and vibrant with those lemon yellows and orange oranges. Maybe it's deeper in the ocean, further down, darker, less sun getting down there. Last but not least, I want us to view and listen to the artist. For Filipina artist Pasisa Abad, life and art are closely entwined. In fact, she sees her work as canvas documents of her experiences, travels and lessons in life. Her latest exhibition in Singapore, The Sky is the Limit, was inspired by her journey through Rajasthan, India. They used these embroidered mirrors and the colors were just neon colors, you know. They themselves are the what I call walking pieces of art, you know, because they have the jeweled and look like they just came out of Vogue magazine. Well, what's in Vogue is Abad's unique style called Trapunta. My technique to what I call Trapunto painting. Trapunto means in, in Italy, stuffing it or sewing, stuffing it, yeah? and painting, which is painting. In her 27-year career as an artist, her paintings have hung in museums and galleries all over Asia, America, and Europe. She uses anything she can get her hands on, glass, buttons, beads, and mirrors. And as she says, nothing is safe or sacred around her. That certainly refers to the Philippines government as well. We artists, you and myself, we are very important because we document these things and, and we let people remind them of, of what happened. And, and, and I believe that's one of our, I believe that's one of my social responsibility as an artist. In the early 1980s, during former dictator Fidel Marcos's reign, her work spoke volumes of the corrupt, oppressive Philippine government. I was one of those brave enough to show those, these works that I did about, uh, uh, one of them is a 25 feet high uh, painting of President Marcos with all his cabinet members on the side, you know, stepping on his wife Imelda <laughs> and eating the Filipinos. And I call that Marcos and his crony. She was, in her own words, politely asked to leave the country. And when she made her way to America in 1985, the influx of immigrants was becoming a real cause for concern for people there. 
It was then that she painted a series to showcase immigrants as real people. These people and they just don't know where they're going to be, you know. And so, so when I did this series of this painting, I showed it at the National Museum of Women and the Arts, you know. And, and it, it, was, it, it was very emotional because I, was, uh, I, I, I know a lot of them. You know? <laughs> a lot of them also were model minorities, uh, Laotians who were really good, very intelligent kids, you know. What did you think of the artist? What did you think of the artwork? Are you ready to get to work on our art project? We're going to do something similar. We're going to work on a lot of different kinds of art. And when we're all done, a person might think four or five different artists must have made this art. Yet it was just one person, us. Now a couple ideas we're going to take from the artists. We're going to do one project in fabric with that technique of sewing and then putting like cotton inside of it to make it kind of three-dimensional, and we might add elements to it, such as buttons or beads, similar to what the artist did. We're going to do one based on shapes. The artist had some like that with circles and lines and kind of spirals and those leaf shapes. Then we're going to have one based on a powerful statement that's more realistic. We saw many, and we talked about many from the artists like that. And one idea I keep going back to is the one image, I believe the title was, if they could see me now, and it was the individual standing next to like a big city. Below them was kind of like more of a traditional house, almost showing where the person came from, like big difference. So we might do a painting about where we're from. Maybe we're from a different place in the United States or a different place in the world and what it's like to live here. Or we'll make our own powerful statement like the artist made on politics or other things going on in the world. So, so far we got the quilt fabric idea. We have the minimalist idea. We have the more realistic, powerful statement idea. I also want to make one. The artist made a lot on animals. We're going to do a similar thing. Now the artist did a lot with ocean sea life. You might decide to do more land life. You might decide to do something from the past, like dinosaurs. So there's another one. Last but not least, I'm going to give you your option of what you want to do for the fifth piece. I'm thinking for my fifth piece, I want to do a lot of quick spiral lines, some abstract people. Maybe I'm going to put a lot of dots on the paper really, really quick. And I just want to come up with something different that I've never done before. Are you ready to get to work, uh, Puppet Mr. Pritchard? And everybody else? Are you ready? Let's get started. I'm ready to get to work, Mr. Pritchard! <laughs> 